uh, I always have to be in the moment and not know and go, I think it'll look good if I put that light there and then see if it does. And if it doesn't, then, then I have to be able to see that. I can't be fixed. So, yeah, I think it's, it's that, I think I'm mean, always existing in the not knowing. And I think, you know, Starawa said he understood, at some point he said he understood light and darkness, but then he wanted to learn about color. I'm not that good. I, I don't think I'll ever understand light, you know, really. I'm always learning more about it. But I, I think one of the reasons I love what I do is light is infinite and, it, and there's a million variations and every room is different and every face is different and every light is different and and so it's always I'm always like on the raft a floating raft like kind of thinking the wind is going this way it's great I mean it's about filmmaking you know it's not about glamour I mean many film festivals really a huge part of them is like about being famous and it's great here because we're none of us are famous so it's nice that someone appreciates just the the, the art of filmmaking it's fantastic yeah i guess we are but that that's that's amazing and surprising that anybody cares who i am Okay, but, but what I like about the festival is not that I'm a star here. What I like about it is people are watching these films for the filmmaking art. Okay, that's, that's why people are here and they love that. They don't love us, but they love maybe what we do. And that's beautiful. I'm glad that somebody cares about what we do. Um... I would say two things. If I mean, look, all of us do different movies and different styles, as you just said. I think that if we were thinking in terms of my lighting style, it tends to be a realistic lighting style. I don't tend to put lights where there wouldn't be one, um, or where that would not make any sense or doesn't feel. And I'm hoping that by lighting things in a realistic way, that it it enhances the the depth of the film. Because people on some on a subconscious level think that what this is real, I think it helps the actor's performance. If if you're doing a realist piece or something where that reality is important, then lighting them in a way that feels real, that isn't falsely glamorous or abstract, can be hopefully makes the movie better. That's in terms of lighting, and then in terms of camera. Um, that really depends a lot on the directors I'm working with. But I would say, because I've done a lot of movies with a kind of a normal lens, but I actually, in still photography, and when I do my own style, to some extent, I tend to be a wide-angle shooter rather than a telephoto shooter. I like a wide-angle lens, and in stills I like 28 millimeter. Um, you know, as opposed to my friend, who's like a guy who's going to be shooting 200 millimeter. And so there is that style thing. I think I, I think I can be very good at that and listening to what a director wants or feels and trying to intuit that even if they're saying one thing sometimes, I mean, I've worked with some directors, just work with a guy, Mark Mylott, he's incredibly articulate. You just have to listen and you, you understand. And then some other people might, they might not be able to express what it is that they're in a specific way, how to shoot it. But what I try to do is listen to the, what they're feeling emotionally and intuit from what they're saying or how I should then shoot it or what the style of the movie is. And I, I definitely think that my role is, is to complement the vision of the director. It's not, there's no, it would not be a good movie if the director is, has this idea and then I'm kind of here. That's the best. I love that. I, I think if you, I think when I was younger, I would be more fixed. In, you, know, you would think the other way, but it's not true. When I was younger, I was more like, I'd have an idea. This is how it has, something has to be. And I, especially I did this TV show, Entourage, 
and I prided myself on being nimble and I and interacting with changing scene interacting with changing light one of the things I do also is I um, I don't tend to control daylight as much as some people I try to interact with it I, I'll modify it but I'm I'm not going to get rid of the sun and put my own sun in I'm going to try to use whatever the sun is doing and work with the sun and so that requires being nimble and flexible because the sun is always moving and um, and I enjoy I enjoy that I enjoy being swift and oh let's do this oh you got a new idea let's go do that I don't I don't hesitate if a director has something says oh, I thought we were going to do this now let's do this I go okay good let's do it I don't there's not even a moment of hesitation you know it may only be to say what do I need to do to make that happen but I like that. I, I, I find myself more free and I have more fun when I'm not some anal compulsive maniac, you know, and I don't even think the work is better. I've done things that require more care, that require, like, you really have to be kind of precise. And yeah, okay, you have to for certain looks. Um, but there's also a lot of fun sometimes in just making a big bold stroke like imagine you have a three inch paintbrush and you just go like that across the canvas and that can be kind of cool and it's very powerful to do something like that so sometimes it's it's easier not easier is not the word but it's more it's more dramatic and more fun to do one bold choice and then let's shoot it i think if you was emotionally disconnected from the material that would be like really bad I mean, I think I, I'm always watching the actors and what they're doing and making sure and thinking, is this, am, are the way we're filming this, is this the best way to capture what they're doing? I mean, a simple thing would be, an example in Secretary was very simple, is there's a scene when they, they do this, they, 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 they do this um, sexual thing and they first become intimate. And I, why, I was shooting it, or I was watching a rehearsal and there was a, and in the rehearsal, James Spader put his hand on Maggie Gyllenhaal's hand. And it wasn't a shot. We had a shot list for everything. It was all planned out. And that was not any shot. And I, I went to the director and I go, you know, this thing when he put his hand on her hand, that's like kind of the key, a key moment in the scene. It'd be great if we get a close-up of that. And then of course we did that. And that is, it's almost like that's the, that's the orgasm. But it's the emotional orgasm. And because... He touches her in an intimate way, their hands intertwine, and it's 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 beautiful.